Welcome to Nadab and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Power to the farmers as the Pradia Larceny unit receives an additional 12 vehicles to its fleet. 90 potential entrepreneurs graduate from the URP program. And media stalwart Therese Mills to be laid to rest on Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. The newly revived Pradia Larceny squad has received 12 new vehicles to add to its current fleet of four. Food Production Minister, the Honorable Devant Maharaj, says the vehicles will serve the unit which seeks to alleviate the plight many farmers face. Twelve new vehicles have been added to the newly revived Pradial Larceny squad. This squad has been established in collaboration with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service as part of the government's aim of creating a food secure nation since it was noted by Food Production Minister Devant Maharaj that Pradial Larceny is the number one cause of tremendous losses to the farming community. 100 officers were trained specifically to serve in this branch. Minister Maharaj, in launching the rebranded Pradial Larceny Squad, says the aim is to restore a sense of security among those involved first-hand in farming. Right now is a virtual wild west scenario, restoring a sense of security, restoring trust and faith in the police uh, for the, especially for the agriculture se sector because they would remember the days of going to police stations and being dismissed virtually because they are complaining about a bygone and pumpkin being stolen and being downgraded in terms of their com complaint. Now with the dedicated Pradial Larceny Squad with their own separate station, uh, that would be changing in the very near future. Minister Maharaj gave his assurance that the move is just one of the efforts geared at securing the nation's food basket. These vehicles would be dispersed from northwest, east and south and no doubt will serve as a deterrent to those criminal elements who would want to um, reap what the farmers would have planted over the months. The Ministry of Food Production remains committed to putting whatever measures is in place and supporting the Pradia Larceny Squad, who we see as essentially becoming guardians of the agricultural sector. And as the, we hope that they operate with the highest level of efficiency and effectiveness in order to achieve those goals. The Pradia Larceny um, area is one which has concerned the, the agriculture sector for a number of years. And uh, this is the first tangible way of dealing with it. It was tried in the past, but it failed because of a number of reasons. We have learned from those errors and we have improved and corrected them with this new Pradia Larceny Squad. Meanwhile, the minister reported an upward movement in the agriculture sector. This is the latest in the Ministry of Food Production strategies to deepen uh, the importance of the agricultural sector. Only yesterday, the Prime Minister, the handing over of the hampers in um, Prisal, uh, complemented the Ministry of Food Production and its activities to addressing the food import bill, uh, food inflation, um, and our national food security. And this has been uh, revealed tangibly by way of information coming out of the central bank. With food inflation now down to single digits in November, it is 7%. In October, it was low as 3%. Um, I attribute the rise to the Christmas season also. Um, our food import bill is down and we have growth in the sector. The squad is currently deployed in four districts located in East, North, Central and South Trinidad. Kimberly Kalawan, News 4. Meanwhile, widespread harvesting of the Cascadura fish and Black River conch by the public has led to near extinction. As a result, the Food Production Minister has embarked on a move to restock these two important food sources. The minister says a two-month moratorium has been approved for the repopulating of these two marine species. Cascadura and conch are common freshwater foods eaten here in Trinidad and Tobago. However, in recent years, its numbers in the nation's rivers and ponds have depleted significantly, prompting Food Production Minister Devant Maharaj to embark on a restocking drive in an effort to repopulate these marine species. One of the areas involved in this rehabilitation project is the Karni River, which is also the site of the third restocking exercise to take place. Minister Maharaj says stock was brought in from Guyana, and will support farms located at a sugarcane feed center. We are confident that this program, this resuscitation program, 
will repopulate the natural habitats across the country as we're doing it very quietly and secretly um, to reverse the declines in the stocks of Cascadoo and Black River conchs and to monitor and conserve these species. It will also reduce the harvesting pressure on the natural stocks by increasing the on-farm production of Cascadoo and conchs uh, through the establishment of the state-operated hatchery at the sugarcane feed center which has a capacity to generate over 1 million juveniles regularly. For many, the species is more than a meal, as it provides a source of income to many families. Acting Project Director at the Sugarcane Feed Center, Suresh Beni, says the repopulation will not only provide food stock, but assist in the replenishment of the environment. In the few remaining harvest grounds, such as in Kunahan, Manzanilla, and Plumitan, but these catches have significantly declined and at current harvesting pressure are not expected to produce indefinitely. If trends are not reversed, both species could critically deplete and Trinidad and Tobago will run the risk of losing valuable natural resources that has heritage, culinary, and environmental importance. Water Resources and Environment Minister Ganga Singh called for the Institute of Marine Affairs to work together with the Seafood Industry Development Company in harvesting and preserving local fish stock in a balanced manner. I want a greater degree of collaboration between the SIDC and the IME. The IME is engaging in mariculture in which they are seeking in a pilot project to grow a seafood fishes in the sea, a particular species, to add to our uh, stocks in terms of the food supply chain. And they're also doing that with the red tilapia. So there ought to be collaboration between IME and Sugar Cane Feed Center and IME and the SIDC. In an effort to also preserve the stocks being released, the minister has received cabinet approval of an annual two-month moratorium on the harvesting of conchs and cascaduras. To achieve these objectives, we have, over the last year, already undertaken a number of steps, which include public consultation with stakeholders in the various communities uh, that are active in conchs and cascadu uh, endeavors to ensure that the approach is collaborative and we hear the concerns of those engaged in these activities. We also sought and received the approval of Cabinet for an annual two-month moratorium on the harvesting of conch and cascadu, and the Ministry of Food Production in conjunction with the Met Office with determine the dates for the moratorium. Since the project commenced, the Sugarcane Feed Center has released more than 12,000 cascaduras and conchs into various natural habitats. Kimberly Callowan, News 4. When we come back, the unemployment relief program to be no longer taken for granted. Stay with us. Dr. The Honorable Suraj Ratan Rambachan, Minister of Works and Infrastructure, is adamant that government's unemployment relief program, the URP, would no longer be taken for granted and that there will be a crackdown in overspending. The Honorable Minister made the statement at the graduation ceremony for 90 participants in a URP NEDCO entrepreneurship training program. Dr. The Honorable Suraj Ratan Rambachan, Minister of Works and Infrastructure, believes that too many people have become dependent on URP jobs and were not taking advantage of the numerous training opportunities available in and out of the program. The minister made the comment during his feature address at the graduation ceremony of 90 potential entrepreneurs who underwent intense training in the area of business with the URP and NETCO. So too many people are still just depending on a URP job, when in fact there are so many opportunities for training, for retooling, and for skill building in this country where they can achieve more sustainable employment. The URP program was never meant to be a full-time, long-term job. 
Unfortunately, that kind of element has come into the program and uh, the program manager has been instructed to ensure that this is not a place for people to come and settle in a long-term job. This is a place where people are going to come to learn how to work and they are going to be weaned and put into jobs. Using as an example the OAS, the contractors building the Point Fortin Highway, Dr. Rambachan explained that other jobs were available, making it clear that, quote, the days for the free ride in the URP program are done, end of quote. On the current highway that is being constructed to Point Fortin, the OAS who are building the highway have told me that they need 680 workers over the next couple of weeks, of which 232 are carpenter masons and 300 and about 50 are steel benders. Now, you have 600 jobs available right there on that highway. You have the white tip program, you have the must program, you have so many programs. You also have um, the work assessment um, program where if you have a skill you can go into a workforce assessment office set up by Minister Fazal Karim and you can be assessed and given a certificate about your capability to do these programs. And yet people still want to just get a ride in terms of the URP program. The day for the free ride in the URP program is done. The end of 2013 is the end of that free ride. People must now empower themselves and you 90 persons in here, you are going to be my flagship in helping me to change the image, direction and philosophy of the URP program. Felicia Wilson, more News 4. Now, the 90 potential entrepreneurs who graduated for the first time were from a first-time joint initiative by the Unemployment Relief Program and the National Entrepreneurship Development Company Limited would have the opportunity to become their own bosses in a short space of time. Dr. The Honorable Surut Ratan Rambachan, Minister of Works and Infrastructure, delivering the feature address and the graduation ceremony, called on the graduates to use their new skills to develop themselves, their families and communities. Pointing out that it was an initial batch of 123 persons, the minister lauded 90 graduates for sticking it out to the end. Dr. Rambachan also praised the URP and NETCO for the initiative. It's the first time that NETCO and another uh, state organization, in this case URP, have joined together and today are graduating 90 potential entrepreneurs in Trinidad and Tobago. This, to me, is the highest number of entrepreneurs in one gathering who have gone through a period of training. What is more exciting is that 120 persons, as I understand it, started the program. 90 persons finished the program. 90 of 120 is 75%. That is a tremendous success ratio, and you ought to give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> what it demonstrates to me is that there are 90 persons in this building this morning who are interested in their personal lives, in improving their lives, in improving the lives of their families, and also the lives of their, com of their communities. Dr. Rambachan assured the graduates that they will not be left alone as measures were already in place to assist them in finding immediate employment. Because you have made a significant contribution a contribution that will lead to a redefinition and a redetermination and re-philosophizing of what the URP program is all about. I am going to stand with you and walk you through this the next couple of months until you become the success that you must be and that you are destined to be. I say this in the following way. Following your graduation today, I have already instructed the program manager that within two weeks, there should be documentation on my desk for 90 jobs for which you are going to be given the labor contracts. 90 jobs. And you are therefore going to be able to manage those with labor contracts to start. I understand that most of you may not have the finances to buy the materials. So in the first two rounds, we are going to buy the materials for you. And you are going to manage the labor contract. And you are going to be able to make a profit. And then we are going to give you a second round. And then on the third round, you're going to bid for your own contract. So you'll become legitimate contractors of the URP program. Felicia Wilson, more News 4. Pro League Action and the Spirit of Sport Awards when we come back. Stay with us.
match day nine of the first round in the TT Pro League was contested on the weekend. And despite some interesting results, one team is still way ahead of the pack. Here's more from Wayne Cunningham. W Connection FC remains seven points clear at the top following the final match day of round one in the TT Pro League. The Savannah boys are the only unbeaten team in the contest with six wins and two draws to their credit. One of the teams expected to be up at the top with W is Central FC, which boasts a wealth of talent. They met the re-emerging San Juan Jablote on Sunday at the Hazley Crawford Stadium, hoping to grab all three points from the club's second from bottom on the points table. One might have thought this an easy task, with the recently acquired Atula Guerra in the central ranks. But it was Jablote who brought a roar from the small crowd first, as a shot from Javon Morris just passes the outside post with Jan Michael Williams at full stretch. That was the hardest piece of work the national keeper had in the first half. This Shaquille Bertram shot summarizes the attacking efforts of Keith Jeffrey's men. Although Central had greater possession, their raids also left much to be desired. President of the TNT Players Association of Brooklyn, New York, Earl Mango Pear, sat hoping for a goal as the first half ended goalless. Four minutes into the second half, he got his wish. Guerra with a gem of a pass to Johan Peltier, who makes it 1 0 Central FC. The youngster from Carnage starting and finishing the move, which beats Kevin Dodds in the Jablote goal. Central did have chances to go further ahead, but they were not taken. For that, they would pay, as Elton John was a judge to handle the ball here, and a penalty is awarded by referee Cecile Hines. Shaquille Bertrand expertly dispatches a spot kick in the second minute of added on time to secure a point for Jablote. As we go back to the points table, we see the draw was hard as fell by Central as the extra two points with the win would have taken them to second spot and just five points off the lead. Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. And the Spirit of Sport Awards 2013 was a celebration of athletic excellence richly deserved by our sportsmen and women as well as their support teams. World champion hurdler Jehu Gordon and quadruple para Pan American gold medalist Chantal Ince were the standout awardees, but there was much more celebration on that special night. Wayne Cunningham has a recap, or that should be a recap, of SOSA 2013. Athletes, coaches, administrators, and support personnel from all areas of sport came out for the 2013 Spirit of Sport Awards. The gala ceremony was held at the Queen's Hall in Port of Spain and was jointly hosted by national athletes Cleopatra Borel, Emmanuel Callender, and Andrew Lewis, and featured live performances from some of the country's leading and upcoming artists, such as Ravi B, Three Canal, Three Miles to Midnight, and Nebula 868. The award show, hosted by the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago, was held to the Red Carpet Fanfare, and was a celebration of all things Trinbegonian, particularly the 2013 sporting achievements by elite athletes and community sports leaders alike. World champion gold medalist Jehu Gordon walked away with the bulk of awards on the night, taking home four trophies, as well as a welcome gift of keys to a Maracas St. Joseph duplex. The 400 meter hurdler cupped the titles of male athlete, consistent performer, breakthrough performance, and the prestigious sports performance. The other multiple awardee on the night was swimmer Chantal Ince, who took home two trophies for athlete with a disability and emerging athlete. There was also a spirited exchange between the Honorable Annel Roberts and Lifetime Achievement Awardee Marjorie John, an 81-year-old multi-sport athlete and patriot 
who challenged the minister to a race around the savannah. Miss John joined the ranks of Macdonald Bailey, 2012, and Rodney Wilkes, 2011, as the recipients of the award, which is meant to recognize those who have given their lives to Trinidad and Tobago through sport. The complete list of sources presented on the night were for Community Sports Program, KFC Comets, Youth Development Program, and the Deaf Sports Organization of Trinidad and Tobago. Community Champion, Quenzine John, Rugby. Male Athlete, Jehu Gordon, Athletics. Female Athlete, Marissa Dick, Gymnastics. Emerging Athlete, Chantal Inns, Paralympics, Swimming. Outstanding Team, Senior Men's Rugby. Outstanding Coach, Dr. Ian Hippolyte, Athletics. Outstanding Manager, Dexter Vonzin, Athletics. Technical Team, Ian Sharp, Athletics. Breakthrough Performance, Jehu Gordon, Athletics. Record Breaking Performance, Dylan Carter, Swimming. Consistent Performer, Jehu Gordon, Athletics. Comeback Performance, Ramona Modest, Athletics. Athlete with a Disability, Chantal Inns, Paralympics. Parents, Tracy and St. Paul Inns. Journalist Electronic, Ken Fuentes of CNMG. And Journalist Sprint, Vinod Manchan, Guardian. The Sports Photo of the Year was Robert Taylor of The Express. And the Best Sports Performance, none other than Jehu Gordon. We in Cunningham. News for Sports. More news to come. Stay with us. The passing of media stalwart executive chairman and chief executive officer of Newsday, Mrs. Therese Mills, is being met with much sadness. Prime Minister the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissasa expressed her condolences to Mrs. Mills' family as well as staff at Newsday and the media fraternity on the whole. In her message, the Prime Minister described Mrs. Mills as a woman of substance who earned the respect of everyone. Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bissasa sent condolences to the family and colleagues of Newsday's Executive Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Mrs. Therese Mills upon her passing on Wednesday. In a statement issued, the Prime Minister says, It is with deep sadness that I learnt of the passing of a real stalwart in the field of journalism. She was a woman of substance, a woman of power, who earned the respect of everyone in Trinidad and Tobago, the Caribbean and the world. Mrs. Mills began her career in journalism in 1945. Her first job was at the Port of Spain Gazette, a newspaper made famous by one of the outstanding editors in Trinidad's history, Andre Paul Terence Ambard, who fought a contempt of court case all the way to the Privy Council in 1934, settling once and for all the doctrine of freedom of the press. Recognizing her contribution to the journalism field, the Prime Minister said journalism and Trinidad and Tobago as a whole have lost a truly remarkable woman. She added that Mrs. Mills changed the way journalists functioned, and I am sure all those journalists who have passed through her hands over the past 68 years can attest to this today. Mrs. Mills was an award-winning journalist and was known for a commentary entitled These Were No Ordinary Men, a saga on the corrupt politics of John O'Halloran, Francis Privat and others. The commentary also won the 1989 BWIA Excellence in Journalism Award for Most Outstanding Social and Political Commentary. She was also well known for championing women's rights in Trinidad and Tobago even serving as Vice Chairman of the National Commission on the Status of Women, appointed by the government of Trinidad and Tobago in 1975. After living in England for eight years, Mrs. Mills returned to work at the Trinidad Guardian, where she became Editor-in-Chief in 1989, as well as the first woman to head a national newspaper in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. She retired in June 1993 and was immediately asked to be the first Editor-in-Chief of a new daily newspaper, Newsday, a position she held up to the time of her passing. Mrs. Mills was a foundation member of the Commonwealth Journalists Association in Cyprus and served as CGA Executive Representative for the Caribbean. She was also a foundation member of the Journalists Association of Trinidad and Tobago. In 2012, Mrs. Mills was awarded a Chaconia Medal for her service to journalism, while in 1987, she also received the Hummingbird Medal for her contribution to journalism. Kim Graham Callowan, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barrico. Thank you for joining us.